Anyways, we are talking about money this morning, guys. Welcome back to the AM Club on MS24 TV, home of fan feelers and factual programs. Yeah, but before that, do you speak French? What is your level in the French language? Let me quickly ask you. Now, your ability to communicate in French gives you an upper hand in your education, your career development, and your travel experience. That's why we're inviting you to join the folks at Alliance Francaise in Accra. Now, at Alliance, they help you develop an all-round language skill set that is reading, writing, and speaking in a multicultural and multinational environment. We have experienced and professional teachers. We have flexible time schedules. They have in-person, online, and hybrid classes. And they also have friends for teenagers and children above the age of three. Register now. Call 050 one two eight seven eight one four zero five zero one two eight seven eight one four, or WhatsApp them on zero five zero one two eight seven eight one eight. You could as well visit their website at www.afacra.org. Alliance Francaise, French up your life now. Time for lifestyle daily, and we are discussing money habits. And our guest to help us do that is our very own, our favorite apostle, Theophilus Jeffries, always with a drip. Good morning, sir. Good morning. And the drip, yeah, yeah, fossil, a fossil. Good morning again, again, uh, again. It's good to have you. You are trying to flatter me, but it's okay. <laughs> no, no flashies here, no jokes so, told. So, um, apostle, money. Money. I'm going to allow money there, uh, my uh, ANT. My I'm going to allow the hey, to. Please don't start to. I shouldn't do it. <laughs> don't start because. Because. The way she's squeezing at you, nah, that's the thing. Please be careful. Oh, please. Let me, I think my first question will be something I read in the Bible. That mm -hmm. Money is a spirit. Mm -hmm. um, I guess it's not a religious conversation, but... Yeah, uh, I, money is a... Uh, the, the love of money is the root of all evil. Mm. Yeah, I don't know if that's what you're referring to. No, it says money is a spirit. Um, I've forgotten the scripture. But it does say money is a spirit. Okay. Uh, and that you can't serve money and serve... God at the same time. Okay. Would you, you use mammon. Yeah, mammon. Mammon. Uh -huh, mammon yes. Or yeah, you can't serve God and, and mammon. mammon at the, the same God time. Mammon, because yeah. it's the spirit. Yeah. Um, but let's come to what you what you just said. Yeah. Apart from money being a medium of exchange, which we all know yeah. that money is, um, what is money that we don't know? Well, from my own lexicon, I define money as the power to do good, or the power to do evil, because money doesn't have a character of its own. Money only takes on the character of the owner. Hmm. So money in the hands of a good man will do good thing. Money in the hands of a bad person will do bad stuff. Sounds like power. Oh, you said money yes. is, is power. Yes, to, power yeah. to do good or power to do evil, depending on who is behind it and who owns it. Hmm. So those who use money to do bad, they do that out of greed and selfishness. Those who use money to do good do that out of selflessness and love. So money on its own is not evil. Money on its own is not bad. But the people who they the users, you know, of the money, they determine whether money becomes bad or evil. So me, my first definition of money is that money is the power to do good or power to do evil. Or then again, I would say money becomes the very lubricant that lubricates the wheels of life. Money allows businesses to run smoothly, marriages to run smoothly, corporations to run smoothly, nations like Ghana. Someone should come and give Ghana a two billion US dollars now and see what happens. You see that the wheels of the machineries of the guy of, of government begin to run smoothly. So money, actually, to me, is also like a lubricant. It lubricates the wheels of life, the wheels of marriage, and all that stuff. Do you have money on you? No. <laughs> Do you have cash? Who has cash here? I want to understand. Yeah. What about a piece of paper? Good. Piece of paper cut Good. Good. by some World Bank somewhere, Good. or whoever cuts Good. money. Powerful. Yes, and yes. puts a figure on it okay. and say, yeah. "That paper that okay. I can just tear or okay. just light it up." Yes. What makes it so powerful? Okay, so so the paper you see is not money. Money is actually value. That paper is called currency. It's called a legal tender. And when you read any currency, so this is a legal tender for the payment of any amount. 
So money is itself is value. The value, for example, the value you bring to a place, then how much they will, they, they will give you. So when we go back to history, how was, how was this thing called money invented? The aggregate age, where they came to butter trade, where if you are selling, uh, when you have yam, I need uh, pepper from you. I have to carry yam to you, and then we have to exchange. So they're doing the butter trade. I became very cumbersome. So they moved to now these carries for you to measure value. Mm. Then before after that, it also became a bit weird. So they invented this thing called currency, which is the paper, which they now use to measure value. So if you don't have value, you can't earn money. So the paper we see is not actually money. The paper we see is just a medium to measure your value, to give you your value. So the value I'm bringing to the marketplace determines how much I get. But having a paper gives me value, yeah. doesn't it? No, no. So, yes. Yeah. So once you have that paper, it means that you've gained some value. So you were given the paper to measure the value you have. Hmm. Interesting. So yeah. anybody who doesn't have value can't earn money. If you are earning money without a value, you are either a thief, you are a robber or stuff. Because you must earn money. Money must be earned. How do you earn it? You earn it by bringing value. Right. Okay. If you are employed, you are employed because of your skill. You are bringing value. If you are not, you don't have value to offer. No, that's how can money actually hide in about seven steps. But one, money hides in problems. <laughs> money is hiding in problems. Okay. So if you are looking for money, you have to look for problems. Mm. Because the better problems you solve, the more money you get. You are not, if they pay you here because you solve, you solve a problem. Mm. If I'm a tailor, I'm solving what? Nakedness problems. You are a driver, I'll give you money because you are solving what? Transportation, Transportation problems. Problem. Whatever it is, you are solving. So money actually hides first in problems. So people who don't know how to solve problems, who run away from problems, come on, they'll be poor. And those who are not even trained to solve problems. And then again, how skillful you solve the problem determines how much you be paid. That's how can people go for up upgrading. They want to better themselves. Uh, you are a diploma holder. You want a degree, you want first degree. You must climb the ladder because your value determine how much you be paid. So if you are not solving problems, you can't make money. So usually prayer actually doesn't bring money unless your prayer is solving someone's problem. <laughs> but I'm okay. Your laughter. I'm, I'm getting, I'm your, okay. We are entering that, your, that your, phase. Your, your laughter can get you money. These uh, stand-up uh, comedians, they are solving what? Loneliness problem, depression problem, and all those stuff. So that's why you give them money. You hmm. understand? So money is, when you walk, now money is everywhere. Solve a problem, you'll be giving money. I I'm going to allow Ms. Mm -hmm. Aleti to, I think she has. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I just want to understand clearly mm -hmm. the first definition he said, that money, you know, takes on the character of the person that's holding mm -hmm. it. And so if you're doing bad, money will go out to do bad. If you're doing good, money will go out to do good. Yeah. Have we not seen people that in society we know, we have accepted, are very bad, and yet their monies go out there to do good? Do good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's why I clarified that. Those two use money to do by two things. Greed and selfishness. So the person who is not good, because good is uh, relative, you understand mm -hmm. that maybe you are defining good in terms of uh, maybe a religious background mm -hmm. or his academic background. Mm -hmm. So somebody who can be, he may not be good in that term, but some people have money. He's not evil. Mm -hmm. So being evil is different from being bad. Somebody is bad, somebody is evil. Being I mean, I'm evil, talking about evil. A yes. person that's evil, and yet mm -hmm. their money goes out to do good. Good, so that's how I'm saying that. How do you define evil? Okay. What's the difference of e e evil? Okay. Let me give an example. We have to find, okay, yes. Let me give an example. Mm -hmm. So can we describe, I don't know if we can describe fraudsters from yes. Sakawa as mm -hmm. evil. Is it evil? Would well, you describe it as evil? You see, a fraudster, the money he makes through what, what, what means? To dubious means? Dubious means. Somebody has collapsed. Somebody may have even gone mad. Somebody may have even gone to a psychiatric hall because you stole some of the money, dubious money. That money is on, in itself is unclean. Okay. So that's ev so. So is that evil? So that money is evil money. Okay, if I use that money, mm -hmm. take ten percent of it and go and mm -hmm. give it to the church. Mm -hmm. Take ten percent of it and go and give it to an orphanage. Mm -hmm. Is that money taking my character? Is that who I am? So you see, so although the money is evil, the owner decide to do good with it. Out of what? Maybe love. Anyway, it's let's very read this. Yes. It's very complicated. <laughs> it's very complicated. Yes. And it was just a question. Mm -hmm. I mean, let's just recalibrate No, the but it's good that we are, we are looking at where, it now. Where, so we know what money is. It's carrying value. It's yeah. like a, a mode of exchange, yeah. you know. We, know. we know what we know about money. Yeah. But what are 
what are the habits that we need to know about money that is not really taught in school? Okay. It, what, what's that habit? Is it what you started yes, with the seven? Yes, yes, yes. Okay. So, so money, but money habit, we have good habits and then bad habits. I really want to focus on the issue on the bad habits. Mm. Because once you can eliminate the bad habits, you have control over their money. Now, the first money habit that people need to watch out is how to spend money. This question, it looks too simple. <laughs> how do you spend oh, Should I be taught how to spend money? There is a how to everything in life. There's a how to drive. There's a how to talk. There's a how to dress. There's a how to communicate. There's a how to do every stuff. The know-how actually becomes the womb, that best giant. Mm -hmm. So if you don't know how something is done, you may, you, you may be limited. So those who even know the how are always stronger than those who know the what. So somebody knows how to make money. He's stronger than someone who knows what is money. Mm. So somebody who knows how he can make all the money, employ you, who knows what the money to, to keep the money as an, an accountant. Everywhere in leadership, if you know how to be a good leader, you are superior to somebody who knows what is leadership. leadership. So the how to be a good husband is always better than what is a husband. So how do you spend money is, is a first. You spend money with a budget. You need to spend money with a budget. Because if you don't have a budget before you start spending money, a lot is going to happen to you. Number one, you cannot even deal with impulse buying. Impulse buying is such that the word impulse, you buy as you see you buy, as you feel you buy, as you sense you buy, mm -hmm. impulse. Mm -hmm. Your budget becomes the regulator that regulates your spending. Every organization has a regulator. The media organization, you have part, a regulator. The bank institution have a regulator. To regulate what you do and what you can't do, to regulate your behavior, to determine that you stay in line, you stay within a confined. People can live within their means. They move out of their means because they don't have a planned budget, personal budget, a family budget, organizational budget. So a budget becomes that police, that polices your money. It secures your income. It secures your earning. Those who have a well-planned budget are able to meaningfully live within their means. Then they can grow money. Because if you cannot control your income and control your budget, you can't grow money. You can only grow money when your income is really under control. When you can control how much you earn, how much you spend. Today, if we ask a lot of people, how much do you even spend on, on WhatsApp, on buying of data? People don't even know. They'll be shocked if they should sit down and take a pen to really calculate how much really you spend on your data. You'll be surprised. People don't even know how much they spend on electricity, utility bills. They spend as they go. Mm. So usually those who don't spend money with budget, it's a free route to debt. Do you have to budget or who qualifies to budget? Everybody. An income earner mm. or somebody who depends on gifts and, you know, people's benevolence? Everybody needs a budget. Okay. Every, no matter whether you, are not, whether you are working, you are not working, whether you are an orphan, whether you are a dependent, Whoever you are, you need a budget because this thing called budget, you see, and not just having a budget, respecting the budget. Okay. We're lucky to have discussed budgeting last week. So mm. that's the, so the first behavior mm. or, you how know, or habit is, is, is the how. How. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you, you have to spend money, number one, with a budget. Now, the second behavior that people have to watch, watch out for is what you call spending assumed income. Now, assumed income is, yes. Uh, it's a prof. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Apostle, I want to ask something. Yes. Um, before you move to the next one, yeah. um, when it comes to money yeah. or finances, you hear all sorts of things, yeah. especially on social media. Everybody's giving an advice on how to spend money and what to spend your money on and all that and how to go about it. I've had two different opinions on how to spend money. Yeah. Now, you hear people say that, for instance, to, to make more money, mm -hmm. sometimes you have to fake it till you make it. So you I had to have Donald Trump. Yeah, you, you, you have to fake it till you make it. You, you have to Donald define that word fake okay. it. So I had Donald Trump say yes. that, you know, he had a friend who, in order to move beyond his status yeah. where he was, he had to live beyond his means. So, for mm -hmm. instance, he started flying business class, mm -hmm. but he was clearly an economic person, mm -hmm. economy person. Yeah. But he started flying business class mm -hmm. just to whatever mentality, whatever, just so that he come to that you know, level yes. so that he can, he, can, he can, I don't know if you get what I'm saying, yeah, I'm, I'm he can live on that level. Yes. And then you hear other people saying, like you just said, mm -hmm. don't spend above your means. Yeah. Always have a budget. Spend this way, mm -hmm. spend that way. So for instance, as a young man, yeah. I want to stop picking chua Yeah. So, but if, even though my salary is not enough, 
I start picking over. Yeah. So I'm sort of spending a little beyond what I have just because I want to change my mindset and get to that level where, you know, I, I, I really seize from Chocho to Uber and then get in my own car. Okay. So what would you say to that? Do you, do you have to spend a little beyond what you have mm -hmm. just to get to that level you want to get to? Or you still have to stay within your means? You see, there's something we call in the school for us, delayed gratification. Now, I'm sure that the person who suggested this ideology, for example, I'm sure maybe they're talking about faith. They're talking about taking risk. For example, if I want a business to do and I'm going for a contract, the contract is worth one million Ghana CD. And here I appear and I don't look like it. Obviously, they can't award me that contract. So people actually even try to brand themselves when you are going for a contract. So maybe I'm going, because in, in, the, uh, in the airplane, usually the, the decision makers, the CEOs, usually they are all usually in first business class, class. Or, what, or business class. So there you could meet maybe a contact, there's somebody there. So I could decide to take a risk, financial risk, calculated one, of course, that, okay, I think this particular flight I'm going, I envisage a lot of business gurus here. So I need to upgrade myself. I could make a contact there. And usually it's contact that can open the door. Mm -hmm. So that could be maybe taking some calculated financial risk okay. that you have to take in a way to either upgrade yourself, to hype your brand, to be able to allow people believe that you are able to do what you claim you do. You can appear for a $1 million contract and then you are all looking tattered, you are all looking unkept, the car you came with is some way. Who award you? You don't look like it. So I'm sure that that could be maybe uh, what so they the allowances are, yes, for that, where you allow can spend yes, beyond. Uh, it's not even spending beyond. That one is, we call it, <laughs> taking calculated risk okay. to be able to hype yourself and rebrand yourself and then win some opportunity and some leverage. Because you got something OPM, other people's money. They will give it to you when you look like it. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> the next. Because then I was thinking, yes. who are you going to meet in the Uber? Yeah. Because then... The person who's taking the business class calculated yeah. risk is sure to have a conversation yeah. and create network. Yeah. But you're, the Uber is just TV, you and you. You're a TV you're person. You're working as a presenter. Yeah. Um, people know your face. Yes. You don't want to be sitting in church. Hall. That's different. That's so, different. So, 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 but your salary is not enough to pay for Uber. Do you yes. understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So yeah. this person but, who was going to take the business class, was it the fact that he didn't want people to look down on, on him? him. Or I, don't, I don't know, like was, I said, okay. but okay. It's, it's an ideology yes. out there that yeah. if you want to get to the next level, you mm. have to live like that level. Yeah. you understand what yeah, I'm saying? Yes, and so, okay, that, that's yeah. why I was explaining that. Well, that. In that sense, you really want to really take some calculated risk yeah. to be able to look like it, because if you don't look like it, you can't become it. Mm. Wow. Uh -huh. So maybe the Uber guy, maybe he's a church person. Mm -hmm. Sometimes when we preach in church, we tell people that sometimes you must get tired with your current situation and say, hey, so because level, you can become comfortable with mediocrity to a point uh, where you are used to it. So at that level, uh, so you, you see, you see so that's where the, uh, the conflict So we have in. to distinguish between faith and reality. <laughs> uh -huh. So, so that, faith is not reality. Oh, faith is reality. But just that when you are taking faith, faith without works is dead. Mm. Mm -hmm. So your faith must be supported by the work. If I'm saying I can't be poor, always in church, I can't be poor. Apostle, if I ask you, why reality can't you be poor? Check. Yes. Faith and money. Yes. Is it like the issue of money, the conversation mm -hmm. of money, mm -hmm. do we really apply faith? Should we bring faith in, you know, the yes. conversation of money? You have to. Even those who don't go to church, they have faith that this thing they're going to be, make money. You mm. need faith. So we call it faith. No, it's not about faith. Church. They call it risk, boldness. Okay. If you don't have that heart, you can't be there. Mm. That's what sometimes I like uh, these Ashanti people. They, they are daring. You see, that daring to take on big contract, daring. They go there. So faith is actually even needed when it comes to money. You need faith to believe that this project is going to work. This I'm going to make it. It will inspire you. It will leverage on your self-confidence mm. and allow you to be able to think properly. Because once you are confident, your brain opens up. But once you are sad, your brain closes. <laughs> Apostle. Okay. Yeah, no, apostle, number, right. two. <laughs> <laughs> number, number two. <laughs> number two. <laughs> number two. Because of the assume income. Mm. Now, assume income is money that you have not yet received. Salary that you have not yet been paid. <laughs> Pay raise that they promise you that they will give you that you have not yet received. <laughs> A promise money your uncle promised to give you. Okay. Somebody's owing you money, he said, I'll give it to you at the end of this month. You have not yet received that money. Do you know people spend all this money before the money arrives? You can even go to a boutique to go and buy a dress. 
based on the money your friend promised that I'll give you next week. How do you spend the money you don't have? A lot of people spend it, assume, like, so you, you know that, for example, uh, Godwin, you promised me that, oh, I've also, next week, if you come, in case you come here and you have a show, oh, come on, I feel that I want to give you some 2,000 Ghana mm -hmm. It's a promise. Uh, so guess what? I said, oh, God some, is going to give me this money. So it's, it's coming. So <laughs> on my way out of the studio today, come on, I'll start spending the money. I'll go to the church, I'll let you know, give me this shoe, and next week I'll come and pay you. I'll come and square you. And people do that. Salary that they say they will increase your salary. The money has no yet come on, come on. They moved into a rental oh, house. Come on, that's come on. More so, so do you know that a lot of uh, government workers or salary workers, usually at the end of the month, they're not happy. A lot of people, right, even today, when you look at their face, they're not even happy. <laughs> do you know why? The money coming in is just going to pay debt. <laughs> Because they are aware that the money is going to come. Oh, God, you're just going to pay the garage seller, the do not seller, the shoe seller, the whatever, because they've already spent the money. Those days, end of month, is always a happy time. Mm -hmm. But now, look at the face, people are not happy, because Charlie, the Anything money coming. Yes, yeah, so they've spent as you money, and usually spending as you money is what leads you to unrecoverable debt. Because as you money has a characteristic, you don't control it. Mm. You don't determine when it comes. A lot can happen. Somebody who promised to give you the money, could I have an emergency? That he said, I'm sorry, yo. I, I, I really wanted to, but Charlie, I, I couldn't. Your boss could have even delay paying you your, your salary. Ghana government or your government could also have some issues. So when you don't know how to live within your means and wait till the money comes, oh, come on, you'll be in debt. And those who always spend assumed income, they can never stay out of debt. Today they're out, tomorrow they're in. So when it comes to the, the issue of dealing with debt, coming out of debt, it's not just about coming out. You have to stay out. But people don't know how to stay out. They are permanently inside because of this thing called assuming okay. income. You are just assuming. You know, somebody, yeah, a refundable money. So I will refund the money. Wait until the money hits your hand. Wait until you have it before you can spend it. Else, you may be shocked. You just, embarrassment may come. Frustration may come. Depression may come, and people are like that. It's mm. a very practical stuff. So don't spend assume income. Mm. Discipline yourself. Financial discipline is very serious. It does not come by chance. Uh, financial freedom is not just by something you wish for. It's something you work at, something you discipline yourself at. It's not an easy thing to hold yourself. No, no, this eye like good thing. Your throat like nice things. Your nose want to spare stuff. I'm telling you, you got to discipline your senses. Mm. Anybody who can discipline their senses can control money. money. That's because very interesting. I because like that. you buy what, what, what you smell. That's true. Yes. I like fragrances. No, no, you buy what you smell. So, so usually in business, we tell people that where you are not just, uh, people don't buy product, they buy feelings mm. and they buy smell. Uh, so when the food smells nice, you have no idea about mm, the fragrance of the, of the spray, uh, the aroma of the food. You buy it. So even the banana seller, you know what, what she, she does? She takes the nicely crafted exotic ones and put in front like that. When you look at it, say, man, you're going to buy. When you take your eyes off, she goes behind and gives you the one behind. And the one that is still marketing for her, drawing people. Because you got to see. So your eyes and your nose and your feelings, they're critical if you have to control money. So our senses are inhibitors to the, the success use of money. Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Yes, yes, okay. Yes, yes. How many habits do we have? Let me see if I've got two. some messages. Uh, okay. How to we have spend two, and then the zoom, the zooming. Uh, yeah, two. Yeah. yeah. I, I, so I, 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 okay. I, there's yeah, more, but here. Uh, good morning. Please greetings to all in Saum Ghana police officers. Um, <laughs> please, money is not evil because money itself is neither good nor evil. It's simply a medium of exchange. It's a way for people to trade one thing. Evil is a way of mentality or one's attitude. You can be rich and not evil. So that quote, money is a root of evil, is all is misquoting. This is what somebody says, Apostle. Yeah. Uh, good morning, guys. Apostle is very good. I like him a lot. Stella from Kibi. I'm sure Apostle says, thank you. I just like the Apostle. He really knows the subject on this morning's show. I'm sure Apostle says, good morning. Yeah. Um, Okay, good morning, guys. I am, is that Chris? Because it has an E. I'm not too sure how your name is spelled or, or pronounced. Someone promised to give me 2000 <laughs> And I, uh, and bro, I went out there to borrow 
an LED TV <laughs> that cost 1,500. Bro, could you believe that I just received 500 from the one who promised me 2,000 kind of CDs? She has uh -huh. to look for the 1,000 too. You have to look and you'll be hot. Okay. Okay, Assume that's enough. the money. Assume, yeah, our yeah. next habit. Yeah. The next one is what you call when you borrow, you lend money to people without first assessing their credit worthiness. We all do that. You are not a bank. I'm not a bank. The banks don't lend money to you out of feelings, out of sympathy. You don't cry. don't give you money. Your crying doesn't allow the, the bank to give you money. Your sympathy doesn't allow the, the, the banks to, to give you money. And you, most of us have lost friends because of this. Mm -hmm. You lose friends. In fact, you may end up losing the money and, and the friend uh, at, at, at the end because people, for example, somebody's uh, any 500 going to see at work. Then he comes to and says, God, can you borrow me some 800 CD? I'll pay you at the end of the month. Your salary is 500 CD a month. And you said you pay me 800 yes. at the end of the month. One, it's not feasible. It's not realistic. It, it, it's not doable. But here's the issue. When people have financial, you know, you call something financial mistakes, for the, sorry, money problems and then money mistakes. The money problems we have, how we solve them, determine whether you're going to enter into have money mistakes. So you make the mistake because you couldn't solve money problems properly. So the first money problem when people have problems is that they want to look for who can lend them money. Mm. So they begin to take their phone. Okay, who, who, who can I call, who can I call, who can I call? So they can zero on you. Oh, I think I'm if I can, let, let me call them if I then, they'll call you. Around that time, their mind goes into what you call survival mood. Mm. All they want to do is to survive. So they can give you any promise. Oh, I didn't have a land. I want to sell. I want to do this. Oh, I already found you. They, all they want to do is to come out of the financial hardship. And they'll give you all the promises. If you're not too careful, you may give them the money. Because you feel that oh, either out of sentiment, out of sympathy, out of whatever. And then you give out the money. Listen carefully. Most people have lost good friendship become arch enemies because of this particular issue. And sometimes even the money you are lending to them is not even your own. Mm -hmm. It's for somebody, somebody kept with you either for another business or some stuff like that. Then you just give it out without first assessing the person's credit readiness. This is not wickedness because the banks are not wicked. They will lend you money when you are credit ready, when you have a collateral. Even if you are credit ready, you still need some level of leverage collateral before they will give you the money. Why are you yourself trying to give money to people without you first assessing them? Me, I do that a lot. I'm an apostle. I give out. I will sow a seed. When you come, oh, can you give me 400 CD? I look at you. I know you can't pay. Well, I could just take maybe a 50 CD or a 70 CD to an envelope. I said, please, could you take this one? I think that I pray that God will, will get you the rest it's nicely. It's but very in, in situations where you can really access these people and you're so sure that yeah. they can pay, except that people just take advantage of relationships. Yes. And it's true, some of them really can earn more than how much they borrow. Yes. But for the fact that it's not a bank, there's Good. no gun to their head, Good. the relationship is what is, you know, Good. facilitating them not wanting to pay. Is that person at fault? Because okay, I can analyze and I can assess. This person can pay. So I tell people that, so right now, even if you know they can pay, let them have, a, let them be under uh, an undertaking. undertaking. Do but that. that's your friend. Oh, it's your friend, do that. Money, when it comes to money, mm. when it comes to money, you don't have to be sentimental. You can mm. be a bank manager. And your close friend, best friend comes to you for money. You don't grant the loan because it's your close mm -hmm. friend. You lose the job or you go to jail mm -hmm. because, you see, there are emergencies in life. Mm. People don't know what could have happened here after two days, three days. So they are sure that they'll refund the money. Right. But after a month or two, some calamity some emergencies come up mm -hmm. that just crash everything. What do you do about that? I had a case like that a guy came, usually I don't even endorse or like a guarantor, but the guy came like my school, blah, 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 so I have to guarant for some loan company like that. <laughs> oh, he even asked me that, oh, I could take his motorbike and keep. I said, oh, I know you, you, you won't do that. Guess what? He didn't pay the money. I chased him, chased him the way after me. I said, yo, you broke your own principle, oh, this thing never again. So I picked a police, we went to his house, he was not there, he parked the motor there. Thank God that I did a video recording when he came to me that day. And Interesting. I, oh, yes, 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 yes. So you need to be very factual, very tactical, very practical when you are giving out money, especially if some huge money. Please, don't be sentimental about it. Don't be emotional about it. Oh, Take away emotional people. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take away friendship. Oh, he's my friend. He's my whatever. Please, don't be like that. He's your friend, but your friend can have issues, can have some financial Problem. difficulties, especially those who don't have contingency accounts. Mm. 
Mm. Because your contingency account is what allows you to be able to quickly bounce back out, out of some emergency. Mm. If you don't have a contingency account, you could always have a setback. Mm. You can't rise again. Mm. Right. Interesting. And Apostle, yeah. I, what you're saying just reminds me of uh, a point I read in the book, um, The Richest Man in Babylon. Yeah. And it purchases yeah. it when it says that don't lend money don't lend any money that you're looking to get back from, looking to get back to yeah. anybody. Yeah. So for instance, like you said, if yeah. MFR says, oh, Gordon, I want 2,000 cities, I want to do something. Yeah. And I realize that I may not know her credit, what do you Worthiness. call it? Worthiness. Yes. I may not know how much she earns and yeah. all that. But I look at MFR and I say, maybe she can pay with 2,000 Ghana cities. But on, on a serious note, like you said, yeah. because of unforeseen yeah, yes, challenges, yes. I'll give her 1,000 cities. Yeah. And if she doesn't pay me back in my head, I know yeah, I won't yes. be bothered. Good. You know, if she pays me back, great. Fine. So you don't necessarily give people the exact amount they're asking for. You give what you don't want to take back yes. if it doesn't come back, yes. right? Yes. That is why people who even come in to borrow money from you for a business, and you ask them, so you ask, how much do you have? Me, I'll never help you. But how much do you have yourself? You have nothing. How much can you bring on board? Nothing. Come on. There are people you can't help, especially those who can't help themselves. You can't help such a person. Once you can't help yourself, any help I give you, it to be a waste of yes. Okay. Uh, so, Apostle, yes. what if you're a staunch Christian? Okay. And you understand the act of giving. Yeah. And you also know that this money that this friend is asking for, mm -hmm. whether it's a loan or mm -hmm. whichever way, mm -hmm. you have it. Mm -hmm. You really have it. Mm -hmm. Though this person coming to ask for the money has had habits, mm -hmm. like bad habits, mm -hmm. and history of not paying back and mm -hmm. all of that. Yes. Your Christian life and your, are you compelled to give? When you don't give, do you feel that you have sinned? Okay, so... I'll talk now as an apostle. Mm. Giving is a good thing. Life runs on giving. Your life, you breathe out uh, carbon dioxide, you bring it, you take it, oxygen. So those who are not givers are not living. Your true lifestyle when you start giving. And their mechanism for giving to the poor is needed, is necessary. Once you give to the poor, God makes your bed in sickness. Mm. When you lend to the poor or you give to the poor, Bible says that you are lending to the Lord. Mm. So when I see a poor person and I give them money, it's like a loan I've given to God. God will give it to me. So there's a part also for sacrificial giving, where you have to give sacrificially. I am a sacrificial giver. You can sow a car, you can give a deal. Somebody needs it. I, have, I bought a new drum in my church. And I saw another church needs it better than me. I pack all the new drums, I give it to a, the, in the church because they need it. So as a Christian, giving is part of your life. Mm. You could decide to look at somebody and say, I'll sow into you. For example, if I see God on TV and I have a dream that one day I'll be on TV, when I see you, I need to sow into you. I need to give you. I said, bro, take this money. What is working for you will begin to work That's for me. Thing. Usually people don't even see that. When you see somebody better than you, the Bible says that without contradiction, the less is blessed of, of the, the better. better. So anybody who is something you are envisaging, you are oh. dreaming of, obviously you need to give to them. You need to sow into them. So you sow up to rise up. Mm. You sow down to remain more strong. Mm. Where's my phone? Can I choose this? <laughs> <laughs> Our next yeah. habit. Yeah. The yeah. next habit is where you go for what you call borrowed money for a business without a definite plan. <laughs> you know something? Having a desire and an interest in a business is not guaranteed to go and start borrowing money. Your desire that, oh, I want to start a business. So, oh, I have an idea. Having an idea, an enthusiasm, passing for a business, an idea, it's not guaranteed that you should go for a loan because Immediately you go for a loan, they start calculating their the profit, <laughs> the, 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 the profit, the interest. And you see, borrowed money is very expensive. Right. Borrowed money is called what you call purchase. You went to buy money <laughs> on high interest, yeah. And usually borrowed money with you depreciates with you. It can either make you bitter, it can belittle you. But whoever lent the money to you, the money is appreciating with them. So when you go in and borrowed money without a definite underline, definite plan, mm and goal and agenda, trust me, chances are that you may misuse the money. You abuse the money. Because we call something money mission. Money itself speaks. How do I mean? Right now, all of us here right now, if you don't have a plan for a 10,000 Ghana city, somebody walk in here and give you 10,000 Ghana city, chances are that you, may go to, you are going to abuse it. That is why you need a plan, a financial budget plan, so that when the money is coming, your plan is absorbing the money. The money doesn't decide what you do. Mm -hmm. Your plan decides what the Manager. money will do. Interesting. That is the way you will not abuse money. So I am here right now. I have a plan for 100,000 Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. You give me 100,000, I can tell you where it goes. It goes here, 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 here. So you have an envisaged plan. 
So you don't go in for money. You have not yet planned. You have not yet calculated. You have not all those stuff. See, you're going to enter into total debt because borrow money can kill you early. And most people, what is killing them is borrow money. They don't know how expensive it is. They don't know how heavy it is. Borrow money is a load. It's an emotional load on you. You wake up every day and you are sad. Nobody rejoices with debt. It's true. Okay. Nobody. You know that stress? The, I did a research that the increase of stress among workers, salary earners, is this thing called debt. Because most of them wake up and they are in debt. The thought of debt alone sits on you, mm -hmm. depresses you. It, it siphons the joy out of you. When you are owing somebody, you see their call, the first call in the morning, your day is messed up. Yeah, you begin to be avoiding their calls. You can't be happy. So you need to have a world plan, laid down plan, so that when you are going for the borrow money, you don't, because borrow money is good. It can either be good or bad. Most of these big companies thrive on borrow, they go to the bank for loan. But that is called loan that they use for investment. Loan they use for feasible business, not for on consumer goods, borrow money to do wedding. Are you okay? Borrow money for funeral, are we okay? I don't subscribe to that. You can't borrow money to do funeral, to do wedding. I cannot borrow money. You save for six years to spend it in six hours. Um, Apostle, sister. But, but why, why were you laughing? Is there is a borrow money for wedding and funeral that caught my attention. <laughs> they say only they say it happens once in a lifetime, so you want to go all out. You want to finish your wedding and enter debt. Mm. You want to finish your wedding. You don't even have a plot of land. You spend over. 35,000 Ghana City, and oh, no, you, you that's go just back. For the decor and, and, and the makeup artist. Okay. What are you saying, Apostle? No, 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 no. I'm, more than I'm, I'm trying to help them. <laughs> you know, and then you go back to a, a rented apartment. You are financially illiterate. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Apostle, so somebody says, please ask Apostle to teach us how or ways to make money. You're looking beautiful. Thank you for the compliments. Apostle, I'm not sure you're able to teach how to make no, money. No, but I mentioned, today. I said number one, money has some problems. Mm. So go find a solve problem. problems. Yeah. Solve mm -hmm. problems. They will give you money. So that me here have problems too. As a pastor, oh, I need people to come and work for me, do something. I'll give you money. Mm. Yes. You here, God here. Somebody okay. comes around. MSTV. You are not. You may, you may not. You want to employ anybody, mm -hmm. but let somebody comes here and decide to work free, and let him be useful. Let him be skilled for two, three months. You employ him or her. This is such an informative and educative uh, topic. Thank you so much for always bringing us the best from Alberta. Thank you so much, uh, sister. Uh, good morning. I borrowed money to buy a phone because I needed it, hoping to pay at the end of the month. But now I'm depressed because <laughs> I have to give all of my salary to the person. <laughs> okay. Uh, I know that... I know that I will make it, but everything is on God. I give thanks to God Almighty. Okay, so... Um, not sure. Okay. Uh, good morning. My name is my, my name is Will's money. Okay. So sorry. Uh, not all the messages I can. Okay. So here. Um. Hmm. This is Matai. Eh? <laughs> loaned. I loaned a friend K. Uh, -huh. uh. For a friend's surgery or wife surgery after my son. This is 2018 May. He was to pay it over six months, which I put on paper. My friend refused to pay, so I called the wife after the surgery and spoke to him before he brought me 3,000 3, Ghana cities. I didn't get the rest. He stopped picking my calls, and next, altogether, his wife also stopped picking my calls, too. March lockdown period, I was broke because I was not working. Fast forward, okay. And sent, I called for my money, and he sent 100 Ghana cities, then 200 Ghana cities. <laughs> I tested him. Okay, so basically, this person is sharing their um, experience, experience uh, with us. So in conclusion, it says that I'd rather dash you not more than 200 cities mm -hmm. than loan you mm -hmm. money as a friend for I my peace of mind. Greetings, guy. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with us. But this is a life, this is surgeries are life and, you know, yes. death matter. Yeah. And this, how bad can it get, you know? You see, and I say something, Apostle, to add to yours, it's yes. true, yes. But I always say that, even if you don't give this person yeah. everything, they will get the rest they from somewhere. What if you didn't it. exist? You know, they will get it. You know, it's better, it's better, it's better you help. Ah. That's why I say you contribute and say, it says K, I'll give you two K. Yeah. Mm. You say you pay me back, that's fine. Yeah. But in my head, I'm not gonna take it yeah. back. 
I'm not looking forward to getting it back. But yeah. if you do pay me, of course, it's my money. Yeah. I'll take it back and put it in investment. Mm. But I'll give it to you. You go and find a 4K Obviously. elsewhere. I've, I've, I've lessened your problem. Obviously. God will bless me for Obviously. that, isn't it? Obviously. Rather than give you the entire 6K, 6K. you don't yeah. give it back. And then our relationship also yeah. becomes... You know, that, that one of the amazing things is of this is that sometimes when you give them the bulk money and they want to pay you back, they split it. Like 6K. You can't give me 100 CD, 200 CD, 400 CD. You just make the money useless because yeah. what can you do with that? It costs something time value of money. What 6,000 can do today, it can't do that exactly necessary by this time. True. So money actually even depreciates when it's not being invested, it's not growing. So you must learn to grow your... How do you grow your money? You need financial aptitude to be able to grow your money. And last, maybe last advice for Christians, again, and I always go back to the Christian yeah. conversation about gifteds and yeah. tokens yeah. And, and all that. Some people, like someone said, I know everything is going to be all right. <laughs> uh, God will help me. God will help me. And probably sitting down at Damn, home yeah. and saying, God yeah. will help me. God yeah. will help me. Because the Bible also says something like this. It, it is God who gives us the ability to yeah. make wealth. To make wealth, yeah. Right? Yeah. Wait, it's wealth and... Money the same yeah, thing. Is it no <laughs> wealth is different from money. You see, when you are working for money, you are not wealthy. Wealthy men, their money works for them. Mm. So you grow your business to a point where by now, whether asleep or your money is working for you, then you, you enter with the realm what you call oh, wealth. wealth. You know, that's wealth. So now you are no longer working, going up and down, grab, 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 work, looking for money. Your mm. money is now working for you. So we say you are now wealthy. But that verse says that God gives you the ability to, to make, make wealth. wealth. That word ability is 17. One, opportunity. God will give you opportunity. God doesn't give money, you give opportunity. Number two, God gives you ideas. You need ideas. Find good ideas. You make money. Number three, God gives you the energy. You have energy. You have strength. Mm -hmm. That is money. Mm -hmm. so, so people should understand that the word of God is not automatic. I keep saying the word of God is workomatic. The word works because you are working it. Mm -hmm. God does not endorse laziness. Oh. No, no, no. I'm on this show this morning. I had a, a tough day yesterday. I, I got to bed at 4 a.m. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, I'm here. I got to bed at 4 a.m. I got at 5.30. Because I still have to just read through what I'm, 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 I'm going to be talking Talk about. about. You see, so you need some level of discipline and hard work. Just talking, talking, like I keep saying, ask Christian sisters. Oh, I know I'll be a good wife. Ask her, why are you saying I'll be a good wife? Oh, because I'm praying. You'll be a bad one. You'll be a bad one. Because you are a wife, not a prayer warrior. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you should tell me why. Then you ask me, oh, Apostle, I know I'll be a good wife because, one, I bought seven books mm. on marriage. I'm understanding it. Number two, I am under the mentorship, under a woman of God or a mentor that is teaching me, that is coaching me. You are giving us reasons why. That's why you, you can be in church and say, I know I'll be like, maybe the guy so oh, everything on God, everything on God. You just sit down there, put your hand, whatever. See, you'll be a frustrated Christian you know, and depressed. So very soon you say God is not true, but God is true. And God is real. The word of God works for those who work it. Work it. So faith without work is it's dead. Empty. You need to add work to faith. Then God can prosper what you do. You need a part two. You need a part two of this Absolutely. conversation. You do exhaust all the habits. I'm no, sure no, no, there are no, no, more. No, no, no. We need yeah, a part two of this. We need so, to continue yeah. this. Maybe next week, Tuesday? Something. We'll find a... Uh, please, look out. Uh, we'll definitely let you know when we're having a part two of the conversation. A lot of well, people have sent some really um, good... Questions. Yeah. And those of you asking where you can get to watch this, if you missed it, uh, we'll put it up on our YouTube page, MXTunes4GH. Okay. Apostle, you want to share your... I know there's more to talk about, but our time yeah. is up, so yes, we'll do a part two yes. when you're free. That's okay. That's okay. That's okay. How can we That's find okay. you? Uh, you can find me on uh, Facebook, Apostle Tiflos Jeffries, or go you find also Accra College of Professional Coaching. These two names you can find me on Facebook. But YouTube, Apostle Tiflos Jeffries. Apostle, before I let you go, somebody has a very important question. Yeah. It says that I'm here. Please ask Apostle whether betting is a good platform for <laughs> making money. Well, it's a risk. Like I said, you need a heart. Okay. You need to take a risk. But take what you call calculated risk. <laughs> Don't just be wishy, we follow sentiment, excitement. No, passion is not enough. You know what is betting, no? I know betting. <laughs> I know why you got betting. People have people have uh, spent all their money on betting. Yeah, it's gambling. You know, it's it? gambling okay. because it's addictive. Mm -hmm. right. Sometimes you you play Charlie, you've got a like the Ponzi schemes that comes. They can trigger you in any, any Ponzi scheme that comes. The first few people that comes in, they allow them to get more money. For them to become like 
uh, advertisers, publicators, to advertise. Oh, the thing works, so it works, so it works. So then before we realize, no, the thing becomes uh, a, a scam. I, I guess the question would be, how many people have made it in life through betting? No, how many people? Even those people. who make it. You know, I did a study about even this, uh, those who win the American, American lottery. lottery. They said that 90% of the after that, when you watch, after 10 years, they are back to broke. They are broke. Because, you see, they don't know how, they lack financial aptitude. Right. right. Yes. How to make money, keep money, protect the money, preserve the money, grow the money, and enrich the money. They lack it. Part two certainly Guys, coming yeah, up. Yeah, we uh, promised it, okay? <laughs> also, thank you. Uh, thank yeah. you very much. So Tuesday, it's a Travel Tuesday. Yeah. Guys, we can't stop showing you sights and scenes from Togo. Miss Yu went to Togo and has a lot to show you. So today, Travel Tuesday, we continue our series from Togo. Do stay and enjoy.